Good afternoon. My name is Abby Dwarfine, and I'm going to be talking to you about treating Parkinson's disease. So you're probably wondering, what is Parkinson's? Parkinson's affects 7 to 10 million people worldwide. Parkinson's patients are diagnosed when they have damaged dopamine cells. The amount of dopamine cells that are damaged is 60 to 80 percent of the total in their brain. As you can see, this is a PET scan. This is a healthy brain, and this is Parkinson's disease brain. The red indicates the dopamine cells, and then these, there is a very large lack of red. Nina Browner from the National Parkinson's Foundation, she, she is a doctor and is the medical director there. She says the symptoms of Parkinson's most commonly are rest tremors, which is uncontrollable movement in hands or feet, rigidity, poor balance, and difficulty completing fine motor tasks. Mm -hmm. Many Parkinson's patients also struggle with their sleep patterns and may suffer from depression. Living with and treating Parkinson's. The disease requires an investment of time and money as many patients require round-the-clock care because of their limitations. Mm -hmm. Many patients face a hard economic decision because they lose the ability to work and with their loss of ability to work they lose an income and their benefits from their work if they have any. That can mean health care insurance which is a big struggle when it comes to paying for medication costs and treatments. Treatments and therapy, some of them can cost $100,000 plus and many of them aren't even long-term cures. Medication costs, I gave the example of Levodopa, which is $2,500 a year um, for, and that is for multiple years. The patients have to take that for long periods of time, and that is not a long-term cure either because the side effects increase, making it hard for patients to continue to use it, and that information comes from the Parkinson's Disease Foundation. Treatment options with embryonic stem cells. So when I was looking into Parkinson's, I was initially inspired by the I Say Baby article, and I was looking at IVF and embryos. And embryos can be donated to research for treatment with embryonic stem cells. The problem with embryos is that they are destroyed in treatments, and that makes them morally and ethically conflicting. And they also have presented tumors when they were used to treat Parkinson's patients in different case studies that I found. So because I didn't see embryonic stem cell treatments as a suitable option, I decided to look into adult stem cell treatments. And my claim is that adult stem cell treatments need to be standardized in the United States because of the overwhelming benefits for the patients and their families. And you're probably wondering, what are stem cells? Stem cells are undifferentiated cells, and according to the National Institute of Health, they can be renewed <coughs> as any type of cell. They come from different <coughs> areas, areas on the body, the brain, blood vessels, skeletal muscles, bone marrow, blood, liver, gut, heart, skin, and teeth. And the stem cells are used in treating Parkinson's. They're either harvested from the brain, those are neural stem cells, or the hip, which is bone marrow, and they are harvested and then redesigned to become dopamine secreting cells to replace the damaged ones that I talked about earlier. And these damaged cells, these fixed cells are injected into the posterior circle of willis in the brain, which is the cerebral artery in your brain, and when they're injected, they re-enter the blood supply, and so they replace those damaged cells. I would like to introduce you to a man named Aubra Phillips. He is 59 years old and he has had Parkinson's for 22 years. He has clinical depression because of his diagnosis and his disease. And in the article I found about him, his wife commented about his shuffling, his stumbling, his falling around, and his slurring of his words because of the disease. He had contemplated committing suicide because his will to live was not there because of his limitations. He could not enjoy his life to the fullest anymore. In 
improving quality of life. So people like Abra who lose the quality of life and the will to live can have stem cell treatments. Abra went to Germany for his stem cell treatment, which cost him 10,000 plus flights, um, hospital stays, etc. And immediately after his wife noticed that he had got his smile back when he woke up in the morning, he was in a good mood and he was ready to complete the day's activities. And in the last picture of him, that picture was of him, and he is a bowler and he had and he was able to resume bowling because he got his function back in his arms and the limitations were not as severe. In other studies, there were eight patients were reimplanted with their own stem cells, and those patients also saw an 83% improvement in their activities of living and a decrease in their depression. So there's benefits in both case studies that I found. Professor Richard Fall of the University of Auckland School of Medicine reviewed those case studies, which is how I found them, and he showed, he determined that there's great progress for stem cell treatments and that the studies show great pro promise for having a treatment for Parkinson's. Now the next step. Government funding for stem cell treatments needs to become available so that treatment is standardized and available to the public in the United States. The leaders in research, which are the Scripps Research Institute currently, they're in California, they, are, they have a $5 million project that includes the standardization of stem cell treatment appro and approval by the FDA. And when they get that funding, then treatment is able to become available to the greater good and can significantly benefit patients and their families. Um, I have a question. Um, in your paper, I mean, in your presentation here, it appears that adult stem cell research is just so overwhelmingly positive, um, or, or very, very, very positive. Yes. Um, what is, how, what, what's the opposition then to stem cell research? The opposition would be embryonic stem cell research, which I think I discussed on the second or third slide. Okay. And that, I also, initially I researched that topic, and I found that there <coughs> were moral and ethical issues with those stem cell treatments because um, technically the embryos are destroyed and many people believe that those are potential lives. Okay. Are the improvements you know, to the patients who use the adult stem cell treatments permanent, or how long will they last? The research that I had found, Abra Phillips is going on, I think if I can remember right, it was four years, and then the initial case study that I talked about, the eight patients, their, theirs was determined after seven months with no complications, and they were still going back and um, doing well checks. How did your research question evolve as you moved through the research process, and did you go a different direction than you originally thought? I did go a different direction than I originally thought. I originally thought that I was going to be focused on embryonic stem cell and the right to donate to stem cell treatments, and then I realized that there's a whole other issue with having need, the need for treatments to be available that have success and that show a positive impact on the world without moral and ethical applications. How do you feel about the sources that you were able to find? Did you feel as though your sources were valid? Um, um, I felt that the sources I found, especially the case studies, were valid and the ones I found on ProQuest because many of those were peer-reviewed. And I also used the Opposing Viewpoints database a little bit, but that was a little harder because there was a lack of case studies. 
but I definitely think that many of them were valid because they had been researching this topic for 